bedroom apartment complex in Southwest Houston. A woman's body found in a cardboard box, a box the suspect was seen rolling out of his home. Now, while an autopsy will determine what happened to her, we know the charges he faces and more could be coming. Denise Middleton joins us live now with the latest. Denise? Good morning. You know, 61 year old Miguel Moreno appeared in probable cause court this morning and his bail was set at $500,000. And so he is charged with tampering with a human corpse. And so a judge did find probable cause to move forward in this case this morning. And there were some very disturbing details revealed as well. But this all started on Sunday afternoon when a witness called 911 after noticing a U Haul box with blood at the bottom corner and a foul odor. When police arrived, they found the body of his Hispanic woman with deep lacerations on her face as if an axe or machete had been used. Her facial bones and neck had been broken. The body was wrapped in a sheet and plastic wrap. Investigators say Moreno was caught on video using a dolly to take the box from his apartment to the parking lot by the dumpster. Officials got a search warrant for his apartment and found a mattress covered in biological material. Blood droplets were found in the kitchen, door handle, as well as the bathroom and living room. Take a listen to what Moreno told him investigators about what happened. A black person entered his apartment by breaking his window, then brought a large U-Haul box into his apartment. Now, Moreno went on to say that he smelled a bad odor and noticed blood on the box and believed that there was a dead body inside, but did not call police because he didn't want to get in trouble. Moreno says he's lived there for five to six years. There is a woman listed on the lease, but it's unclear if she is the victim. Now, Moreno is not a U.S. citizen. He's from Mexico and has lived in Houston for over 25 years as a painter. We're told that he has no pending charges and has a criminal history, no criminal history, uh, but the criminal history that he does have, rather, dates back 20 years ago, and these are all misdemeanors. We'll keep you updated on the very latest. Reporting from downtown, Denise Middleton. Fox. Okay, so y'all just heard that story right there, and the reason why I'm talking about it is because of what you heard in the, the 911 call that was given to him. Now, the person that was speaking was the dispatcher, and she was speaking in English, but someone, it was translated from what he was saying. And so you have this man here whose name is Miguel Angel Moreno, as you heard in the audio, out of tech, well, from Mexico, and who was living in Texas for the last 20 years. And now, apparently, to stack onto the misdemeanors that he had 20 years ago, he now has a felony and a huge one under his belt where there was a woman's body found inside of a cardboard box, inside of a box. And this doesn't surprise me because a lot of the times when you think about a lot of those people who are like mixed in with like the cartel and stuff down there in Mexico, they are known to put people's bodies in boxes and barrels. And that's not me, you no know, stereotyping or anything like that. That's just how a lot of them get down. It is that brutal. So who knows why he actually did this. But the thing that I took away the most is the fact that he went out of his way to use an age old PC trope in blaming black men for the crime. Like he said, a black man broke in and did this. And I don't know what Houston's black population is. I think it's relatively high. I'm not entirely sure someone who's down in Texas via Houston or probably just in Texas can let me know down in the comments what the black population is. But See how easy it was for him to blame a black man? And people want to tell us that or try to tell us that there's some kind of black and brown coalition or unity or whatever the case is. There is not one. This guy allowed his racism to show through the minute that he let that leave his lips. Instead of him taking up and owning up to his dirt and his crime, he said a black man broke in and did this. No wonder he didn't want to have the police come by or he wanted he didn't want to go and file a report because he was the one that did it. He was the perpetrator the entire time. There was even witnesses that came out and said that they saw him leaving to go to a dumpster with what looked like a body or something, something in a box. So he was already caught anyway. Even, you know, even with that little lie that he gave. But. What I'm noticing is that that 
lie of the black man did it or the black man broke in or something, the black man kidnapped or something like that, whenever it comes from people like himself, tries to tell the police that I think a lot of them, and I'm not going to say all of them, but a lot of them are wising up to the fact that they're, they're lies. They are all lies for the most part. Unless you can show absolute proof that a black man did what they're claiming that they did, you have no proof and it's all hearsay. And the thing is, back in the day, that was very scary to have happen to you because that means it could have been any random black man that they could have came across based on any kind of wild description that they gave. And they could have been hemmed up for something that they did not do. So he could have kept that lie and just owned up to what he did. Besides, he got caught anyway. It doesn't even matter what kind of lie he came up with. He was already caught probably before he even told that lie. So it is what it is. And they need to throw, and speaking of box, that's exactly where they need to throw him at. Throw him in a box, preferably in a box where there's a lot of black male inmates. And hopefully they get wind of what he said and then they can deal with him accordingly. And that's my take on it.